So today we're going to be talking about poiety and haploid number. So uh, sometimes you can confuse them, sometimes you won't really remember which one's which. So uh, what I have is an example of a human, which then you can use to memorize what each one means and then go forth from there. So here we have a human karyotype. Uh, you can see that this is a female because it has two X chromosomes, but if this chromosome is gone, and if we had a smaller Y chromosome, this one would be male. You'll notice that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, and even if it's an X and a Y and they don't exactly look the same or they're not exactly the same shape, we still count that as one single type. So there's 23 distinct types of chromosomes. And luckily for us, what that means is we've already found the haploid number. The haploid number for humans is 23. We have 23 distinct types of chromosomes, so our haploid number is 23. Awesome. So now let's try to figure out what this ploidy is. We have two chromosomes for every single set. We've got two here, two here, two here, two here, even two here for the sex chromosomes. So our ploidy would be two, right? Two chromosomes for each set. If we had an extra chromosome here and for every single one of these sets, we would have three. So then our ploidy would be three. But since we only have two, we our ploidy is only two. So now that we have these two numbers, what we want to do is we want to somehow put them in one equation together. And the way to do that is you take your ploidy and you put it in front of this n. So you have two n. But then this equation won't make sense because if you multiply this side by 2, you have to multiply this side by 2 too. So our resulting equation is 2n equals 46. And that's what humans are. We're uh, diploids. So that's that 2 part. Di meaning 2. Ploid is ploidy. Isn't that cool and fun? And then... Um, we know that we have 23 distinct types of chromosomes because if we divide both sides by 2, we get n equals 23, back to this, back to that, we've got 23 distinct types. And now let's say that there's some sort of organism out there that has one chromosome for each pair, right? So we just get rid of all of these chromosomes and we do that for all of them. We would call this a haploid. Haploid because it has half as many uh, chromosomes in each set as the diploid. And we would write this out as 1n equals 23. And this n here, it's kind of important to include because if you don't include it, you're, people are going to assume that that's just the haploid number. But it's different. This is the entire equation. We're just multiplying it by 1 because there's only 1. The ploidy is 1. So it's a little distinction, but it's important to remember. And the reason that humans make haploid gametes is because of fertilization. So if we have um, one gamete and another gamete, so let's say that's the egg, let's say this is the sperm, we're going to end up with a diploid cell. Or you started out as a diploid cell. You needed all of these chromosomes from your mom and from your dad, <laughs> and each one of these had half as many chromosomes as the completed cell, as the completed you. If, for example, um, the sex cells from both of your parents were diploids, that would mean that you would have four of each of these chromosomes in each set, which is just question mark, question mark, that's not how it works. So that's why it's important that gametes or sex cells are haploids.